of all places, to talk about expanding health reform in that state. Texas has more uninsured people than any other state in the country by a mile. And the Republican-controlled state government in Texas is doing everything in their power to make sure that the opportunities to get health insurance that are offered by Obamacare are as hard to access as possible for people who live in Texas. And politically, of course, it's provocative to see the Democratic president going down to Rick Perry's Texas to make this case about how Rick Perry and the Republicans have done so wrong by the people in their own state. The Republicans in Texas have not been able to help the people of Texas, but the federal government is controlled by a Democratic president, and he would like to offer some help if only the Republicans would let him. That is a provocative geopolitical stance for the president today. But substantively, on that issue of health reform and on the issue of the politics of health reform, there is something going on with this story right now that the national media, certainly the conservative media, but I think also just broadly the Beltway media and the national media have not really caught on to yet. It may explain the Republicans' sort of willful denial that they actually lost last night in Virginia. Over the first few weeks that the health reform exchanges were open, over the first few weeks of the implementation of health reform, the rollout went really poorly, right? The website was really glitchy. The White House was on the defensive. The administration was on the defensive about how much they were screwing up the rolling out of the program. Look at what happened in the polls, though, over those first few weeks. Gallup polls showed that over those first few weeks of Obamacare, Americans' view of health reform became slightly more positive. It's supposed to be a disastrous rollout, right? But this Gallup poll and the Washington Post poll and the Pew Research Center poll found that, weirdly, Health reform held steady or even ticked up a little bit in public esteem over those first few supposedly disastrous weeks. After the government shutdown was over and the conservative media could settle full time into talking only about how terrible health reform is, culminating in the last two weeks of just wall-to-wall 24-hour -wall coverage of terrible, terrible Obamacare, the poll numbers... According to a new Reuters Ipsos poll that's out today, weirdly, the poll numbers on health reform keep going up. Overall public support for the health reform law from last month to this month has gone up a little bit. Among Americans who do not have health insurance, their approval of the Affordable Care Act is going up. Their disapproval of the Affordable Care Act is going down. Again, this is amid 24-hour fire hose coverage of how terrible health reform is, how everything is wrong with it that you could possibly imagine. But the proportion of uninsured people in this country who are looking forward to trying to use the new law to get health insurance, it's gone from 37% last month to 42% this month. The poll numbers on Obamacare are going up, which is absolutely inexplicable if you only look at the Beltway media. Yeah, the conservative media most of all, but pretty much the whole national media is following their lead and talking about just how terrible this is to the exclusion of everything else about it. They're talking about it in a way that is specifically designed to translate individual bad news stories about some things that people don't like about health reform into political disapproval of the law in a widespread way. Political disapproval of the president, political disapproval of Democrats. That's the message from the national press, which makes no sense when you look at the polls. What's driving the polls up when all of the media pressure should be pushing them down? Maybe the answer to that can only be found in the local press and the local news and these little human interest stories about people's actual individual lives and how they are actually individually affected by this policy. Maybe the Beltway Press is not ready to admit it yet, but maybe there are political consequences, not just for the things that are wrong with health reform, but also for the things that are right with it. 57-year-old Gail Roach says she couldn't believe what she was hearing when she was told she could have health insurance under the Affordable Care Act for $70 a month. And when she realized she qualified for subsidies on top of that, her rate was cut again to an amount she calls astonishing. A dollar and 11 cent per month. Per month. Roach received help using the federal website from a group called Enroll America. Obviously, we don't want everybody to think that they're going to get health insurance for a dollar a month. We spoke to the group's state director, Bill English, from Philadelphia today through a FaceTime interview. He says Gail has it right. It is possible she'll only have to pay about a dollar a month for the most basic insurance plan offered. Based upon her uh, income and family size, the tax credits that are available to help assist her with the premium payment would in fact make her payment what she has told you it is, a dollar a month. But it's also important for people to realize her situation is rare. This is very unique. We have not come across anybody else 
who was able to purchase an insurance plan for a dollar. Um, but just from looking at the model, it is possible that other people may find uh, similar savings. So that's local coverage from uh, Pittsburgh, from WTAE in Pittsburgh. And this is representative of the way good news stories about health reform are covered, right? You see this stuff in almost human interesty reporting terms. It's being reported as a curiosity that we found locally, not as something that has any national consequences or political consequences whatsoever. All the bad news about Obamacare will shape the national political consequences of this law. But the good news? Huh, that's fascinating. Quirky. It's totally counter to the national narrative, but it is actually people's lived experience. You see it in that Pittsburgh story. You see it in Kentucky, where people are being helped. You see it in Maine, where people uh, really want to sign up. Interest is high. You see it in Oregon, where they're getting people signed up in a hurry. You see it in states like bright red Oklahoma, in Tennessee, where they're counting up the number of people who are eligible for help buying health insurance under the new law. Republicans have convinced themselves that they have done nothing wrong politically this year, that nothing needs to change, that even the races they are losing, they are technically winning because they're against Obamacare, and that's all you need to be. Just sit back and reap the political rewards. We are 34 days into the implementation of health reform now, and the polling is what it is. The national press and the conservative press and the Republicans say that it's, it's terrible and it's getting worse, and Americans on the other hand, are kind of starting to like it more and more every day. One day after this historic loss last night in Virginia is a weird time for Republicans to be so cocksure that they need to do nothing else besides be against Obamacare. One day after that race is a little bit weird to be such a cocksure time about this rather fragile, fragile little strategy they've got going on. Joining us now is Celinda Lake, the Democratic pollster. Ms. Lake, thanks very much for joining us tonight. It's nice to have Thank you here. Thank you for having me. So the Republicans insist, even against the evidence of losing that governorship last night, that they can win all over the country by running against Obamacare. The polls, to me, seem inconclusive, but uh, if anything, to be going the other direction. How do you see it? I see it exactly the way you see it. And let me tell you the other really important number. Only 24% of the people want to repeal Obamacare and not replace it with anything. Another 13% want to repeal it and replace it with a Republican alternative. And then 22% of the people actually want to expand it. There's only a quarter of the people who want to get rid of this thing. Most people want to make it work because they know how serious it is to have affordable health insurance. Moreover, that 24% has been the same for two years. This so-called botched introduction, well, real people want to see it fixed, but they also want to see what opportunities are provided for them. And every day, it gets better. My own small business, we've already gotten a rebate, and we've already gotten a notice that we were supposed to notify all of our employees that now they have birth control with no co-pays, and it's considered preventive care. We already have two positives on our side, thanks to Obamacare. Can you tell the extent to which any of the races around the country are actually being seen as uh, a referendum on Obamacare, which the, which, which the Republicans were so eager to mm. brand that, that governor's race in Virginia, even though they lost? <laughs> That's right, even though they lost. I'll tell you, the Virginia races, I think, were a referendum on the shutdown. And what people couldn't believe is that the Republicans would shut down the entire government over Obamacare. And in fact, we went into Richmond and we did four focus groups of people, all who were independents and Republicans, not necessarily very pro-Obamacare. They had been seeing ads against Obamacare. And we asked them, uh, do you think the government should be shut down over Obamacare? And they said, are you kidding? Absolutely not. This is reckless. Let's get going. They didn't say we love Obamacare. They just said, let's get going. Let's try this thing. Let's make it better. Americans want to move forward. They want to fix a website. For goodness sakes, we sent a person to the moon. We can fix a website. Let's get going. Let's get this figured out. I will say what I think is the most sinister thing is what the insurance companies have started to do, which is falsely say that they are knocking people off their plans because of Obamacare. And we as Democrats and progressives have to aggressively respond on that because that is outrageous. It is not true. And we need to call out the carpet and say that, you know, the insurance companies would blame everything, including the snowstorm, on Obamacare. That's not what's happening.
Celinda Lake, Democratic pollster, uh, thanks for helping us understand these dynamics. Thank you.